I'm going to demo and review this Harley Benton for you, but I'd also like to show you the process that I went through to turn this guitar from a bit of a mess to a perfectly good guitar to the guitar that you'll hear and see later on in the demonstration. If you want to see my initial reaction to the guitar as it was out of the box, I've got another video up on my channel showing the unboxing and what I thought about it. Keep in mind that other than a new set of strings, I didn't spend any more money making this a much more usable guitar than it was in its original state. So let's go. To start with, the frets desperately needed a good polish and a pretty intensive setup overall. But if this slightly inconvenient step is what allows us to buy these guitars at such a low price, then I'm fine with that. It was £75 and I didn't even know what kind of condition or state it was going to turn up in. As you can see, the nut looks a bit messy. The strings were catching in the slots, so I ran the strings through a few times and it cleared the slots and opened them up a bit more. You can probably even see how nasty these frets are in the video. It looks like the CNC machine possibly tore out a small chunk of maple while working on this third fret inlay. So they filled it in and they've done an alright job. You can't really feel it and you definitely won't feel it while playing. Truss rod access point uh, could have been sanded and finished a little bit better, but I'm being really critical here. Again, while being really picky and critical here, there's a few rough areas on the edges of the pit guard, but who really cares? Let's start by getting rid of these cheap rusty strings. Now the tedious task of taping up the fretboard to protect it from sandpaper and polish. I start sorting out these frets by using 1500 grit sandpaper for a few passes and then move on to 2000 grit. And that's the easy part, I hate the next part. Next I apply some of this metal polish to a paper towel and work it into the frets. I then spend a good 10 to 20 minutes polishing all the frets until they look like a mirror and feel like glass. This next part is my favourite, it's so satisfying. Then I like to use this F1 fretboard cleaner. In this case it's not to nourish the fretboard as you would if it was rosewood, but it works well to clean off the excess metal polish. I've had this Daddario lubricant kit for years, I must have used it on 20 plus guitars and I use it nearly every time I change strings and there's still loads of it left. Uh, I like to lubricate the nut slots and the bridge slots. Next up is restringing, and if you've seen any of my videos before, you probably know that I love Ernie Ball strings. It ships with 9 to 42, so I'm going to just use these Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. It's not a gauge I normally use. If I'm using nines, I usually use their hybrid Slinkies 9 to 46. Then it's just tuning and some intensive stretching, and more tuning, and more stretching, and more tuning. Relief was good, and I didn't need to adjust it. And now the action. It took a couple of attempts, a bit of trial and error to get these saddles at the right height. I should have probably used the shim because although I managed to get the action perfect, the little adjustable allen key screws are now a bit high but it's not a big deal. After this I tested the intonation and it was actually just right which was a nice surprise. Last thing is cleaning the strings, removing any oils from my hands. I like to use fast fret for this and sometimes I use the only ball string wipes but I've run out. So as you can see, the frets really did benefit from a good polish and the guitar overall was kind of transformed after the setup. I'm now going to play you some sounds and you'll be hearing unprocessed audio. I'll switch between room mics and close mics to try to give you the most kind of accurate demonstration that I'm able to. And after that, I'll give you my honest opinion on this guitar.
boxing video I said something like I don't think this is a toy and once it's had a proper setup it could be a good playable guitar I'm glad that this has turned out to be the case because I would have felt pretty stupid if it hadn't I think to say it's good for the money is stating the obvious and the fact that you can have a playable guitar built and assembled for 75 pounds is pretty impressive this guitar plays really well now I actually really like it like so much more than I was expecting. The neck is so chunky, so if you don't like that kind of thing, then it's probably not the guitar for you. Um, I don't really have a preference when it comes to neck shape and neck size. I, I like to have a, a variety for different things. The pickups are not bad. If you're using amp simulations, then you might be able to get uh, away with keeping them. I think that if you're using a real amp with minimal processing, you might want to get rid of them and put in something a little bit better. Uh, for now, I'm leaving the stock pickups in. The tuners seem fine. I don't feel the need to upgrade. Overall, the tuning stability has been really good. I don't know if I would recommend this guitar for beginners, and that's because although it was kind of playable out of the box, it wasn't nice or easy to play in any way. It had issues that needed addressing, and I think a beginner would have really struggled with the action so high as it was. It was probably the highest action I've ever played, and I think it would have made learning to play so much more difficult than it already is. And with such a poor retention rate, you want to make playing as easy and enjoyable as possible. Most beginners probably won't understand or appreciate the value of a good setup. I know I didn't. So maybe something more like a mid-price Squire would be a better option. But if you're willing to send it to a good tech, have the skills yourself, or if you are looking to refine your own tech skills, this is perfect. I'd buy this again. In fact, I'd buy another one just to have in like a, an unusual tuning. Nashville tuning is something I've been thinking about. So to me, it's it's kind of looking like maybe these guitars aren't just all hype with no substance. I'm actually really looking forward to buying my next one to see how it compares. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been useful and I'll see you soon.